Hi, Micha. How are you? Hi, Axel. How are you? Yeah, fine. We speak about the end of development and the end of developers. And how do you see that? <laughs> how I see that? Yeah, so the end of developments, you mean in terms of AI-driven developer tools? Yes. Or in general? Someday will come the AGI developer and will define how to work and he will be much better than any developer in the market so is that true i think everything will have an end at a certain point but not the ai the job as developer will not end because of ai driven developer tools that's what i think if you have for instance one of these products is called copilot and i think these tools are supposed to be a co-pilot and assistant for developers that help them to rather get ideas or get some thoughts that the regular developer would not have about coding. And you will receive certain suggestions for your code when you are coding. Have you tested the co-pilot already? Yes, I tested the co-pilot. I tested ChatGPT 3 and 4. I tested all of them. The jump between 3.5 and 4 is quite remarkable. But the thing is, it works very well when you start a project. And let's say you have to write lots of new code. Yeah, you want to basically write a prototype and it will find all the suggestions for you. Or it learned a lot of code patterns and algorithms that are there. And then the suggestions are often quite good. It can be a bit dangerous sometimes because it claims these suggestions are working and often they are not, or they, yeah. they do things differently than intended. And if you don't know what you're doing, then of course you will also make a mistake. What about you use one AI to write a code and you use another different AI to test it. Is that not possible? Yeah, the thing is that the principle of these AIs, they are working on the same pattern and it's basically a big statistical approach in the end. So it's nothing magical. It's a language model and how good the model is, the better the suggestions are. There will be differences in the model. Some models are, for instance, better for certain programming languages than others. But for instance, if you have one AI that is good at giving suggestions on how to write a unit test, for instance, that mm -hmm. would be possible. What is not good, not now, maybe it will be in the future, that AI for refactoring code, for restructuring code, for maintaining code, because there, I think the main bottleneck is you as a developer, you read the source code and you get a certain understanding of it. So... You have a model in your head, and then there is the model inside the language model, what it learns, and the AI model of your code. And these are basically two different models. Yeah. And in order to agree what is actually to equalize the models and to have some exchange between the models, so you basically can improve it, there's the bottleneck in between the language itself. So you give the AI prompts, and you have to say what's in your head to the AI and the AI has to understand and has to give a certain feedback. The thing is that these prompts to say what is actually in my head, in natural language is quite difficult actually. Yeah. And that's basically I consider as the main bottleneck. It's also when two regular non-AI developers talk to each other and they talk about the same thing and you realize, ah, no, he or she meant it totally differently than, than I, because I had a different imagination in my head of the code than the other person. And this is the same for AI. And the thing is, there's this natural language barrier that is there. And just one example, you type to refactor your code, but what will it do? It will certainly not do what's in your head. But it's often easier to just do what it's inside your head than just thinking about how do I express this, what I want in English or natural language, you know, and then you simply start refactoring instead of thinking about a way how to give this prompt to the AI that the AI will eventually do it. So at least in my experience, that is what is kind of limited. This often also leads to misleading results. And then in the end, that's not engineering for me. If you just start giving the AI random prompts or just 
trying to give the perfect prompt to the AI that you get the specific result instead of using your own brain, you know, what you actually wanted. I heard a uh, very interesting statement a few days ago that Elon Musk meant that Rust would be the programming language to build the future AGI. What do you think about this? <laughs> Rust is definitely good, as we talked last time, if it's about safety yeah. or very well-structured code. You know, Rust is a general purpose language. You can code anything. And right now, the most of the AI tools that are out there, they are based on, on mostly written in Python and lots of GPU code like CUDA or something, what is out there. And of course, you can also write these tools in Rust. There's no yeah, and, I think and, and that, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that Elon Musk is pretending to look for a language which works very good with machines for his robots, for instance. For instance, it's really hard to get Python to work on low level hardware. And for AI, you need graphics hardware often because AI, the accelerated computation works mostly on works on graphics hardware usually, and you need some kind of interface for that, which is nowadays often CUDA from NVIDIA. That's why NVIDIA is making so much profit. Wow. Uh, yeah. One of the reasons, because they're selling their graphics hardware as hot bread, you know, buttered bread, it goes away, you know. And Rust also has an interface, a very good interface or good libraries for these GPU interfaces. So I think it could be possible that Rust in the future, it plays a, a major role in AI programming as well. Not yet, but let's see in the next two or three years. Micha, your hand on your heart. Do you use more AI than in the past for your daily work? Yes, I use it, but it's mostly, as I said, it's about getting ideas. It's a basically not a replacement, but an addition to Stack Overflow. Yes, sure. But you so that's... now daily with that co-pilot? Not daily, but regularly. I use it usually for getting ideas and yes. for features, libraries, and stuff like that. It makes me more productive in the end. To summarize it, it will not replace developers, but it will them certainly make them way more productive. How do you see the speed of development of AI tools? You remember it was in November 22 that we mm -hmm. saw the first time ChatGPT. And now mm -hmm. it's nearly one year. In one year, how was the change in one year? I mean, I adopted it within one year and I guess of lots of developers adopted it. I think not all developers will adopt it. There will always be conservative developers. But I think the pace will increase, I think, also next year. Yes. And then the technology itself, the language model technology is also not perfect. So there needs to be another technical breakthrough for instance that maintenance of code and refactoring code is possible it might be that this comes at a certain level but it's not there yet and as long as that's not there the pace will decrease a bit i think most developers will certainly use ai tools as at a regular basis but not as a complete replacement one thing about the job market so i think we will need less developers than expected the need for developers, AI actually limited this a bit. Why? Because developers are more productive and then you okay. need less of them. That's the reason. Okay. And I think also that basically the junior developer, the script kiddie, we need less of them, but we rather need actual engineers. Yes. And you need a computer science as a science and as a profession, you know. So what is actually needed is that we need more skilled developers than actual script kitties that don't know what they are actually doing. So we need good engineers and these are the people that they won't disappear. And we haven't talked about another topic would be the, the responsibility. AI is not responsible. In the end, people are responsible. And that's why in the end, always people should write the code. And so most of the developers will not lose their job. Okay, Michael. Yeah. Then thank you for the day and see you soon. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.